video that we're going to be reacting to, which is transgenders versus detransitioners. Plus, we hit a million subs, baby! <laughs> Yay! Thank you all for being here and chilling with us every day. Let's get into it. <laughs> What's up, guys? Happy Monday. We hit a million subscribers over the past couple of days. It was a few days ago we hit it. I think, what was it, Friday? Taylor's yeah, here, by the Friday way. Friday night. Yeah, hey, in studio, not in Nashville. Hello, in everybody. In studio, because it's a big day. Auspicious day. Yeah, we hit a million subscribers, which is so wild. You guys have grown this channel so quickly, which is amazing. And I'm so glad that you guys have enjoyed the content that we've put out and that you're here to celebrate one million with us today. We got balloons and things and all these different decorations. <laughs> <laughs> we're chilling. We we did go to Party City and get the balloons and we were just putting these like up. Like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. We're throwing a party for ourselves. It's fine. We've always been a scrappy bunch. So you know we're going to get it done. We got our, our 1M balloons over here and we're gonna react to a little video i have not seen this yet but mm -hmm. apparently taylor and the team put this together this is Wait. our all right going back over some of these clips getting uh -huh. the tears just oh, did going it? through fought, fought my way through <laughs> trying to compile some of this stuff cam worked very hard putting it together it's a little oh, yeah. scrappy it's a little rough but if you guys have been around for any amount of time you've seen scrappy and you've seen plenty of rough so uh, it sounded weird but anyways yeah. uh <laughs> We're going to go ahead and react to this video before it gets any more weird. Yeah, 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 we are. Because <laughs> I met, I was in Utah last week uh, on Friday night, and I met a bunch of you guys who are like OGs of the show, have been watching it since it began. So this is going to be a, a trip down memory lane for, for all of us. Let's see what this video has to offer. I'm scared. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. Is it going to work? Okay. Wrong video. Oh, it's me. This is the dancing you guys never see. I am constantly doing that when the theme song is playing behind the scenes, guys. Mm -hmm. Just know I'm getting hype behind the scenes. We say that. Welcome to on. A <laughs> we say what? We say that that we always say like, oh, I'm dancing when y'all aren't watching, but this is what it actually looks like. It, so it is. It is what it actually it. looks like. It's embarrassing. Apologetic live. Guys, welcome to unapologetic, unapologetic live, unapologetic live, unapologetic. I'm your host. I'm your host, Amla Epinobi, and Taylor's in the house. <laughs> Taylor. Hey everyone, it's Amla Epinobi, aka Half oh, Black Conservative, and today is my first day on the PragerU team. I'm going to be their new personality. So I may be a new face for you, and I wanted to share a little bit of I content that I've done <laughs> so you can swipe left to check it out, and there will be plenty more where that came from. You're fired. Hey, oh, this is horrible. Wait a minute. You know what? <laughs> Holy smokes. This is the bad place. Not the TikToks. This is the bad place. <laughs> this is the bad place. This is the bad place. So I get a lot of comments saying that to be black and conservative at the same time means I have no respect for Prager myself Force somehow. Influencer. Prager Which Force is Influencer, Amala Epinobi. Oh my gosh. These are so cringe to watch. <laughs> <laughs> this is when I first started making content on the internet, which was really not that long ago, but it's just so different looking back at it now. I can just feel how nervous I was. I think this is one where we took your TikToks too, that you were just making on your own. We're yep. like, oh, she's, she's ours now. So we're going to put our Prager <laughs> Force Influencer on there. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Happen. Oh my gosh, hopefully there's not a long version of this. Oh Volumes gosh. as to how far our society has regressed, both politically and intellectually. Hi guys, and welcome to my new YouTube channel. I'm on the set of Unapologetic. Oh my gosh. Speak, filming some special content for you guys. I want you guys to. That was to one year ahead ago, by the way. Subscribe. A year ago. We have a live show that's going to be happening every single weekday coming soon. Whoa, there goes the laptop. <laughs> I broke my laptop live on air. That yeah. was fun. That was the laptop. Who needed it? Oh my god. What are you? What? Which, which flag is that? My laptop. Oh, I was still playing broke. the game. Oh great. <laughs> Maybe it just died. No, I think it broke. <laughs> this on is, air. Well, early, early on, when mm -hmm. we did oh, one gosh. of your early streams, not this story. We had uh, a floating shelf behind Amala that stopped floating because it was attached to the wall with <laughs> tape. <laughs> Hi, Will everybody. I? True. And you bring up such a good point with that. <laughs> Utmost respect in this debate here. And she is completely dismissive. It's it's so strange. <gasps> and it's so so good. Good. Just real quick. There goes the, sh there goes the shelf. I cut away. Right, now we're, now there's like... nothing more that can fall. So I think we're safe. <laughs> Tyler, go get us some milk. <laughs> Hot ones. Like... We were so ratchet back then. Oh, my God. There was like literally like white tape in front of it to disguise like a little glowy <laughs> thing on the bottom. Oh. 
Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was so bad. I'm crying. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but when I laugh too hard, I cry. So <laughs> this video is bringing tears to my eyes. Oh, oh it was if you're so in the, bad. If you're watching, you're, you were <laughs> watching it back when we did. That was like pre-unapologetic live, pre-Will and Amala live. Oh, it was just like man. weekly wrap up with Amala. And we... <laughs> We like turned on a camera and like a one flashlight in that dark studio and and uh, threw, oh so bad. <laughs> I think we taped that that thing to the wall, which was really stupid. You know too. when oh. when Michael Scott puts Ryan in the closet <laughs> and he's just working from there. That's uh, literally how it felt. I thought you were gonna say when Michael Scott made the Michael Scott Paper Company. <laughs> That's what we were running up there. Also that. Oh man, I'm crying. Wow. Uh, okay, so now we were they were cutting to when we did. Uh, uh, hot takes, which was a segment where we eat extremely spicy sauce that they have on the Hot Ones <gasps> show, yeah, and uh, try to debate something. This was the first time we did it, and it went horribly wrong. Which we need to, we need to bring this back. We do need to bring yeah. this back. Not we even need some milk. <laughs> um, what are there? What are other good songs by the Beatles? <sighs> Abbey Road. Oh. On air with Amala. I really don't know anything by the Beatles. I'm not a fan. <laughs> um, a uh, okay, another hot take. <laughs> We live in an extroverted society. We should change I'm it to crying. an introverted society. I agree with this one. I agree. This is a warrior effort by us to try to keep Look this at Scott. Going. <laughs> oh, Holy man. Gosh, that was okay, here's my take. Um, <laughs> you can't live in an extroverted led society. Because, it's like I mean, making an, an argument. Led society. I'm trying so hard. Because introverts can't lead. Oh but my gosh, my is, I need to skip. Why do you need I can't. for society anyway? <laughs> Zuby's here to back it up. That is uh, Stephen Bunnell, aka Destiny. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Do you have a BLM tattoo? Uh, you know, I got a Black Power Fist tattooed on my arm when I was 16 years so old, regrettably. Watch. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's there. As far as whether or not you are offended by something, but Dr. you can't Phil. speak on behalf of the entire Black culture. Joining us the ranch. to talk about all of this is Amala Epinobi. Did I get it? You Did got it right. I got it. You got it totally I was right. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> You're one of the first people to actually get my name right on the first try. What I think uh, the bathroom issue opens up is an issue of predatory you know, so weird men to watch. taking I hate advantage it. I hate of it. the opening. <laughs> because the thing I is, disagree. if it looks like, oh, if I identify as non-binary, but I how do you know that? The reality of That's it your is, opinion. Uh, the reality of it is. Uh, shout I had out to a Blossom for how many times that was said on that episode. <laughs> shout out to Blossom. <laughs> the trans experience is not a monolith. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you guys got through that whole two-hour episode, but uh, that was a fascinating one. Shout out to Blossom. I and was in Buck. the room and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was shout out to Blossom. Yeah, shout out to Blossom and Buck for coming on. <laughs> my opinion, it's not the facts. Of it is, but how do you know that? Because the fact is, is you know okay, that? I'll tell you. The fact is, his attorney said he identifies as non-binary. Taylor's in the producer's bay. Is a new army school getting real woke? Oh, come so far, what guys. What is it about that sort of like woke generation or woke movement that drives you nuts? Oh, this was the vice. The vice. fact that it just takes people and boils them down to what are really superficial identity characteristics. Mm -hmm. So much of my work when We're I was get on the left for this was now. just yeah. revolving around copyright this. my race. <laughs> Being a female, it completely dictated everything I did as a young person. And people get very, very angry when you say things like that. Um, it's my it's first ever PragerU video. I was nervous as hell. So you filmed that during your like interview. You came out for like a few days. Yeah. Right? Yeah, basically they came out and they were like, oh, we want you to film Stories of Us video. So I came out here and I filmed this video where I look like a child and I'm so nervous the entire time. And you can tell if you go back and watch this video. And then they offered me a job like the second day I was here. And I moved out to L.A. a few weeks later. So so you passed the interview, I guess. Yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> I, it, was, it was a good thing that I came out here. <laughs> because they want their race to be seen. They think it's such a pivotal part of who they are as a person. And it's overtaking character. It's overtaking morals and values. It's overtaking where you even land politically. Your race is seen as this sort of pivotal There's structure to who you are when <laughs> that should not be the case. <laughs> Affirmative action actually harms yes. everybody involved. Love it. So when you put a black student on a campus or put them in a job and you've given them uh, you know, preferential treatment in order for them to be there, you've actually robbed them of knowing they've gotten an opportunity based on their own merit. So they're questioning themselves. There's more? Hi, Amala. <gasps> this is Cheryl is from South River, New Jersey. And I just want to congratulate you on your upcoming 1 million subscribers. That is that so is sweet. Huge. Hey, what? Amala and the rest of the unapologetic crew. 
Congratulations on 1 million subscribers. Love your channel. Love your content. <gasps> Can't wait to see what you bring us next. Happy 1 million subscribers, Amala. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, unapologetic is like a breath of fresh air and reminds oh me Oh my gosh, are you guys going to make me cry? Yo, Mala, congratulations on 1 million. Hope to see millions more to come. Oh, she's got the last hey. of us poster. Um, my name is Azaria. I watch Unapologetic starting, like... Oh my gosh. I think I started when it first came out. I just want to congratulate Amala for hitting 1 million subscribers. Also, what is your favorite cheese? <laughs> what is my favorite cheese? Um, Um, I don't know. White American. <laughs> oh, wow. <That's... laughs> oh. <laughs> white American. <laughs> oh it's like God. all my jokes are white American that... cheese. <clears throat> that is so funny for so many oh reasons. God. Oh, my. Well, you remember we had someone, <laughs> what was it, Floofy Ferret? There was like a YouTube uh, audience member who would post like, in the countdown to the show at the beginning, they would just write like a thousand different kinds of cheese. Um, and that was, and I think they brought that to the discord. Too, oh, so. amazing. I'm crying again. Oh this my gosh. This is going to be a good day. Well, ever since it started in 2021 with Will and Elmo alive. And I've been watching unapologetic Live <sighs> ever since it started last year. Crying. Congratulations on 1 million subscribers. He's an OG. And Skull Vikings. Skull! Hey, look go, at the Vikings! Vikings! That's Taylor's team. Yeah. I just wanted to uh. congratulate you on your 1 million subscribers oh, on your so new sweet. show. I've been watching you since it was Will and Amala. Congratulations. She's so cute. Thank you so much, Amala, for all of you, that you have done for us. And it's so incredible to see how far you've come this in so this time that we've been making this journey as Prager Force and as Prager mm. U. So proud of you. So excited to see what Still else crying. we achieve as we continue forward with this mission. Hi, Amala. Congratulations so on reaching 1 million subscribers to your show. And thank you so much for unapologetically being a voice for young conservatives. You are much appreciated. Hey, everyone. And congratulations to Amala for reaching 1 million subscribers yesterday. It's for <laughs> April today. I'm Indonesian Muslim and conservative liberal political leaning player Jira Frost member. Amala Surfer actually really means for me present days. Even I'm enjoying an early day, but actually I'm just active since two months ago. For that two months, we gained a lot of new friends. Aww. Congratulations, Amala. You certainly deserve that million subscribers. So Hi, nice. Amala. I'm so excited for you. And I appreciate oh, what you have done to speak reason to so many. And I hope that you continue to grow your platform and reach more people with um, truth. Oh. Amala, congratulations on passing Not 1 million subscribers. <laughs> well deserved, well earned. Continue destroying narratives, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Wow. Hey, Larry Amala, Elder. Congratulations on hitting 1 million <laughs> subscribers on YouTube. Are you kidding? Do you realize how difficult that is? I've been on YouTube now for like a few years longer than you. I got to 575 ish, and all of a sudden. <laughs> I guess I said some things about the election of 2020 and COVID you didn't like. <laughs> then I got another channel. Now we got about. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's referring to. And little by little, it is growing, but oh so slowly. And his nationally syndicated you know, radio show. It's tough show. when you're the black face of white supremacy. <laughs> it's tough. Do you know people? And if so, who do you know? Give me his or her name, or should I say they? No kidding. Congratulations. <laughs> it is quite a milestone, and you deserve it. Oh, you are talented. You are incandescent. You are charismatic. You are smart. Did any of that sound sincere? Seriously, Amala, God bless, and congratulations. Y'all have no idea the role this man has played in my life and his watching his videos and how he has totally transformed my mind and just hearing him speak. How this is the craziest, craziest thing ever. Out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> hey there, Amala. I hear you're reaching one million subscribers. Dennis! That's all? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Everybody congratulated you, so I thought I would be Gosh. a little ornery. Amala, you, you've earned it. You know, earn is one of my favorite words in English. You have earned it. <clears throat> I look forward to two million. Oh. 
Amala, my friend, I want to wish you congratulations I'm on hitting a million cry. YouTube subscribers. Oh now, I obviously have way more than that, <laughs> and we can chalk that up clearly to racism. But <laughs> due to YouTube's new equity program, they're going to be oh, taking man. away subscribers from whiteies like me and passing them off to people of color like you. We're very excited, Hell happy yeah. to do it. I'm also sending you a small check. Love you. See ya. Reparations. <laughs> Hey, Amala, what's going on? It's your boy, B. Tatum. I am, girl, I am so proud of you. To hit a oh, million man. subscribers on YouTube is off the chain. Now, I want you to remember this. I remember where you started. I remember how you started. <laughs> and now you hit a million. So I just wanted to give my special thank you and, and, and just show you appreciation and tell you how much I'm proud of you. You've been doing a really good job. Always stay solid. Great content. You keep up the good work, and you're going to go millions and millions and millions ahead. Mm -hmm. So God bless you, Amala. Congratulations on hitting a million on YouTube. You go, girl. He's so sweet. I went on I went on Brandon's uh, show recently. He's like, you're about to hit one million subs. And every show that I've been on recently, I did Larry, I did Brandon. They're both like, oh, you're about to hit a million subs. I'm like, how do these people know I'm about to hit a million they subs? Almost, they almost spilled the beans. <laughs> right. Gave it away. I'm like, how do they know this? They're not like <laughs> looking up the yeah. channel before they interview me. It's people are stalking so me. It's weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Amala. Alan. Congratulations it's my heart. on 1 million YouTube subscribers. Amazing. I oh. knew you were special when you walked into the Prager studio. This is too much. What was it? 2 years ago, 3 years ago and I have to say I was right. Congratulations. Congrats on hitting 1 million subscribers. Oh, this is absolutely oh, insane, especially this fast, oh, but it's well-deserved. You're incredibly funny, talented, charismatic. You offer great takes, and it's an honor to watch you grow and even be a part of the show sometimes. So thank you for having me on. More importantly, congrats on hitting 1 million subscribers. Hey, Amala, Alex here to wish you a huge Yo, congratulations HRH. on reaching a million <laughs> subscribers on YouTube. That is such a huge deal. Girl, keep calling out this woke BS clown world. Never back down to them. We do not live in a clown world. No, we don't. We need to get the F <laughs> over it, okay? Love, love you so much, girl. Keep it up. Bye. She's Aww. so great. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Wow. I think that's it. Holy, who who put all this together? <laughs> that is amazing. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, so I got to give Sabrina it's credit not and then coming Cam out of my nose. edit it. And here's Sabrina Please also stop. sent some flowers. Sabrina Come also on in the shot, some guys. Flowers. Come on in the shot, guys. This is, this is the whole unapologetic team, pretty much. We got uh, oh, Cam. Oh man. What's up, Cam? Cam say um, hi, Cam. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he edited that video flowers. together. And the one Billy yeah. cake. And then Scott, <laughs> bring that Sprinkles. in the shot. Oh, did the. Did the <laughs> <laughs> Did the flame go out? It's okay. No, 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 we're gonna light it in here. Oh, we're gonna light it in here. In here okay, yeah, cool. And then she's gonna blow it out live. <laughs> Wonderful. So there we wow, go, guys. Wow, guys, this is awesome. We'll give a little Woo! applause. So I need like a tissue. Is there a tissue over there? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> we got some tears. Your blanket. There's a, there's a. Oh wait, there's one right here. Okay, there's a tissue up there. There's also a napkin on the ground. Oh, but so we'll awesome. give her the tissue. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow. Boom, boom, boom. This is I feel so like we need to be like singing happy birthday or something. Okay, but guys. Happy one million. One million. Ready? One. Here we go. Two, three. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to like blow my nose. This is un Not over the cake. <laughs> Not over the cake. Sorry, guys. A super spreader over here. Woo. Um, all right. So thank you all. Was that worth doing at the beginning of the show? I'm was like, how long is this video? It's 10 like, minutes. I don't we can't know if people are going to want to watch this. Yeah. I didn't know it was in the video. Uh, and that was amazing. So to all the people who had a hand in putting that together, thank you guys so much. And thank you guys so much for watching this show and spending every day with me, which is just amazing. Our whole team is so appreciative of everything you do to support us. And the fact that we've made it to 1 million followers and subscribers in this amount of time is just insanity so i'm glad that what we're saying is resonating with you and you guys are finding a little second home on our channel with your own set of friends and just having fun sitting down and hanging out with us every single day we greatly greatly appreciate you my life has been forever changed i mean there's no question about that you guys just watched it in that very short video so here we are
Here we are. Uh, Look at us. <laughs> Who'd have thought we'd be here? Not Who'd me. Who'd have thought? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Run, man. Yeah, major shout out to these two guys in here, Cam and Scott. We couldn't do it without you guys. Yes. And thank you for everything that you do. Shout out and, to you, Taylor. Taylor's been here uh, since the very beginning. Ever since I flew here from LA, Taylor's one of the first people to find my videos on the internet. And that is the reason we are all here today as a team. So, and we're just growing and showing. Just, <laughs> just growing and showing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, do you guys want to keep watching us like celebrate ourselves? Or, yeah, are we, know, are we done we here? Actually, like, I think, do we've, content I think that's it. Um, I'm just going to get the snot out of my nose. Oh, I almost said you were going to eat on air. I didn't think we were I'm, going to. I am going to eat cake on oh, air. Let them um, eat cake. That is what I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> but I will get into this Jubilee video first and we'll start doing that. Okay. Guys. Thank you for watching. The video begins now. Uh, so. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. These are gorgeous, by the way. Uh, Sabrina picked those out and have sent, had them sent. So thank you, Sabrina. And she sent the cake. As Sabrina well, is so. such a G. Oh, my gosh. And Sabrina's been here since the very beginning as well and has always been a part of, of my team. And is like a major cheerleader and has always supported me in literally everything I've done since being here. So shout out to Sabrina as well. I love you. Someone so said much. the cake is not showing. Did you guys did you guys show the cake enough? See the cake. Make sure you see it. There's exactly one million sprinkles in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had somebody and pick them out. Um, yeah, so we're going to eat some cake and watch this video. I'll start the Jubilee video off first so we have something to go off. This is titled, Should Minors Transition, Detransition versus Trans Middle Ground? And I already recognize at least one face, two faces in this video. So let's see. Raise your hand Woo. if you feel attacked by the opposite side. Uh-oh. Ooh, some of them raised. Taylor, you want some cake? Sure. Oh, I can't go through this thing. Detransitioned, transitioned. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Gender-related treatment should be banned for minors. It's interesting because they have to label the two sides, detransitioned and transitioned, because it's hard to tell at some point whether what side each person's on as their bodies have changed and their faces have changed. I'm sure that's really interesting. Mm. <clears throat> Gender-related treatment should be banned for minors. I am 100% walking forward on that one. Taylor? Agree. Agree. No minor should be able to uh, make this decision uh, for, for themselves. Absolutely not. <clears throat> Medical transition is no place for a child. I transition as an adult and... I have medical complications. Mm -hmm. I have mental health issues. Child cannot oh. consent to a medical transition because kids want they want to eat ice cream every day. It doesn't mean that they should. I kind of agree with you on that as well because we have so many rules and regulations when it comes to tobacco or alcohol or any type of drugs. Wow. Driving a car, Seven years you can't ago. even you know rent a motel until you're like 25. There's some specific things that we need to put into place that I think would help protect our children because the minors themselves really don't know who they are until they become 25, 26 years old. Their minds aren't fully developed and it's just, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I did transition as a, as a minor. Oh wow. Um, you know, I was a, a teenager who had a lot of mental health issues and had been sexually exploited and hated my body. And it, it ended with me kind of finding spaces where that was, that was twisted into no, you're just a boy in the wrong body. Mm. And it, it ended with me having my first ever medical intervention, being a double mastectomy at 16 before any hormones, before anything else. And because of wow. transitioning at such a young age, in the past six months, I have watched my body fall apart and waste away in front of me. Oh my gosh. Now listen to that, and then try to listen to the people who tell you that this is not happening. <clears throat> that minors are not undergoing this treatment, that there's nobody who is performing double mastectomies on minors, and that they're incapable of even receiving this treatment. So why are we even having discussions about it? Listen to that story and then try to hold the beliefs that we just talked about. It's clearly happening. You know, I, I have constant joint pain. I've watched my muscle mass waste away. I've watched my vocal cords hurt. Ugh. I don't know if I'll ever be able to carry a child. 
The evidence we have suggests that the best way to figure out if gender dysphoria persists into adulthood is to let them grow up. Because a lot of these kids will grow out of it and many of them will just grow up and end up being gay or gender nonconforming. Do you see where that, <clears throat> where that opinion is coming from? It's coming from sheer experience. You can kind of see the trauma in Luca's face. Uh, is she is talking about it? I imagine this is she, right? From she to him to back to she. Uh, you can you can hear it in the voice. You can see the pain being expressed as she's trying to tell this story. Unbelievable. Yep. Can the disagree a step forward? I mean, if we're going to be honest, every major medical organization supports gender affirming care for trans youth. They, they say it's safe do. and it's life saving. And there are numerous studies nope. that back that up. Nope. The study that backs it up for puberty blockers is the Dutch protocol and the same scientists. I have 10 studies that I can bring to you The right same now. scientists that brought that up have since rolled it back and said it was never supposed to be applied the way it has. The American medical industry we all know is money hungry and has gone off the rails. Again, I always get into the body language stuff on here. Notice the difference in body language. This person being like, those studies that you're referencing um, are invalid for many reasons or have been applied wrong and this person coming, uh, I have many, I have many studies that I can reference. I'm ready to jump on you and tell you exactly how I feel. And I've seen this person on YouTube before. Uh, he's reacted to our videos about transgenderism and has called us out and said we're hateful and transphobic and we're contributing to the ending of trans lives, uh, which we know not to be the case. It's just interesting to see this energy of, I'm just trying to warn, I'm just trying to let people know that this is not the right decision for them. And then somebody who is so beholden to ideology that they want to shove their opinion forward, even if it's at the expense of other people's lives and existence. I, I do agree that there are definitely some doctors out there that may be taking advantage of trans people. And I'm sorry that you went through this. Truly, I, I really am sorry. But trans mm. kids are valid and it's not a decision that they're making. Right. It's healthcare. I want to speak to that real quick. Like I came out 13 years ago when I was 14 and I knew not that I was trans, but that I was a, a boy. I had to go through a lengthy process of therapy and seeing an endocrinologist and like go through different tests and exams to make sure that this was real to everyone else involved. Mm. Transitioning and being trans was just a, a, a process I went through to become who I always knew I was. It, you know, it wasn't a like decision that I made. It was a life or death thing for me, for me. And if I hadn't gotten on hormones and gotten surgery at 16, I don't know if I would be here. As a father, mm. um, I have, I have four kids. And so, and also as a trans person, I think that um, knowing what it looked like for me as a child and that experience of going through all of the turmoil and all of the trepidation mm -hmm. around my gender identity, I would not put my children in that situation. And also, I don't think that surgeries should be allowed for minors. Like when we look at the data and we look at the statistics and we look at the research, the vast majority of these surgeries are happening to adults. They're not minors. Yeah. So let's start there, right? And then mm -hmm. further than that, if we look at puberty blockers, puberty blockers are reversible. So when it comes to children, when we talk about puberty blockers, that gives them a shot. You can say puberty blockers are reversible. But that doesn't mean that they don't cause damage. It does not mean that you just delay puberty for however long you choose to delay it. And then the second you change your mind, everything goes back to being normal and having the same functionality that it had before. Yeah. And it gives them autonomy over their bodies. It gives them oh, a, a the space screen. that they can nope. exp stay in our stay in true stay in. to our scrappy form. We always got to lose the screen at some point during the stream, guys. <laughs> we always got to. OK, we're back. Are we? Yeah, we Explore. Are who they are without surgeries, without all of these other things that could have permanent effects. Sure, yeah. Explore who you were, are. Mm, maybe eight and 10 when I started my transition. And so I talked to them in kid terms. I told my son, I said, look, you know, your mom, dad wants to be a dad because that's how I feel. And my kids being so young, they understood it. They were like, okay, we're with it, you know? Uh, and so as they got older, I, I would bring them into my world and get them to understand the things that, that maybe I was going through. But now that they're adults, uh, they understand differences in people. 
not just trans people, but people in general. I just want, and there's never going to be a clear definition of this, of what it means to be a woman who wants to be a man. Because I'm always, there's masculine women, of course. What is it that in your brain tells you, well, no, I need to undergo surgery and I need to change my entire body and my entire likeness to fit this sort of sense of self that I'm feeling within my brain. It's just not never going to link up for me. Yeah. Um, like when, when the guy said I, I needed to do this to save my life or whatever, it's like, I believe that you believe that, mm -hmm. you know, agreed. I don't necessarily believe, like, I believe that was an ideology presented to you or, or a way of, uh, something that you can latch your, your feelings onto mm -hmm. and make sense of yourself and make sense of your feelings. But that's what's dangerous about transgenderism mm -hmm. is it is like this prepackaged set of beliefs and about your fundamental identity, the deepest things of who you are to the core. And it says it, it tells you that if you don't do this, you will. Uh, right. You will be depressed forever. You will never be your true self. And like, you know, developing your identity is a very complicated thing. And being your true self is much more complicated than just changing your body or anything like that and to reduce and transgenderism kind of redu reduces it to that it does it can yeah and it and people make these life altering decisions but you're just going super hardcore into an ideology and i'm speaking as someone who you know went super hardcore into like a, a, a kind of a dogmatic form of christianity right when i was young mm -hmm. and i i so i i have empathy for for this because it's there's this you know we all want to just have a way to explain the world and explain ourselves and our identity and all that but some the ideologies it gives you that but it it, it gives it to you in a way that doesn't really map onto reality in, right as it should and that leads to constant cognitive dissonance and just existential turmoil for the rest of your life and i'm speaking as someone who had that existential turmoil as a like hyper religious sort of dogmatic rigid believing person and then i had to go through and negotiate each one of those because i was like okay i can't fully depart from reality i can't fully embrace ideology where does ideology uh, not line up where does my where do my super deeply held beliefs not just work in the real world and then how do i bring myself back into reality and that's what therapy and uh, treatment should be doing is bringing you back to the real world bringing you back to accepting biology accepting your true self which is is comes is part of that is the, what how you're born there's lots of things that a lot of people are born with that they can't change that's part of who you are right um, and treatment should bring you back to reality and back to uh not having that cognitive dissonance with just objective truth and that's what it should be helping you to do not pushing you further along right it's so wild that people go through this and they go well yeah i feel like i'm a man deep down and then practitioners tell them okay well let's just try to shape shift your entire body and surgically change anything we can so that you can fit this inner perception that you have wild i feel really strange when women do it with plastic surgery i feel like i have uh, triple m boobs Okay, and then you you go under the knife and, and, and you get them. Obviously, it's on a, a somewhat of a lesser scale than what we're talking about here. But you don't have to morph your body and shift and change things to fit like this distorted view of what you think you should be. You should work on the distorted view, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So there is such thing as gender fluid. How yes. do you know that this kid is not going to change their gender expression later on? We really actually don't have studies on children that are taken over a long term, like over 10 years. This is so, I'm all over the place. So this person's name is Shape, and I imagine that is a chosen name, who is detransitioned, but pronouns remain he, she, they. So detransitioned, but is saying I'm all these different Everything pronouns. Yeah. There's 20 years, you've only been on testosterone 14 years. One of the oldest trans men, Buck Angel, he almost died from testosterone. You're saying right now it saved your life, you may still die from it, you don't know. Mm -hmm. It's but true. You're still happy. Exactly. You'll die for ideology, and a lot decision. of people have died for an ideology. It's... You hear that? You're going to be dying for an ideology, and a lot of people have died for an ideology. Which is a criticism not of the person, but of an ideology. Yep. Which they won't take it that way, but. And think about what they just said there. You know, like they're saying that if my distorted view of myself and my need to distort my body leads to my death, meaning that they had a hand in their death, the ideology had a hand in their death, and the medical practitioners that diagnosed them and allowed them to undergo medical transition against their better interest 
and to be on testosterone, something that might kill them, they're saying that's okay because they will die having fulfilled their distorted view of self. That is scary, guys. And if you're thinking about some him saying that and saying, I will die happy, and then allowing that distorted view that is wholly subscripted to ideology to influence children and to allow children and to fight for children to make the same decision because, oh, he's gonna die happy, so why shouldn't all these other children be possibly led to their deaths for their distorted view of, of themselves? You heard it there first, folks. He said he took in the information that testosterone could kill him or her and said, I'll die happy. Not an idea. Well, we it's crazy. It's an idea that you were born in the wrong body. Themselves. Look at the, the suicide rate of transmasculine folks is at 55%. And one of the, one of the factors that could save their lives is support. Right, and so if we have Depends folks on the that type are of support. committing suicide because they're not allowed to transition, how do we fix that? If you're I telling me the transition the first, the for, first for thing, children or minors is something that's that's that first, shouldn't be done. The first year, be I'm very I'm very sensitive to this subject as I've been the person who has had to talk people off the ledge when it comes to suicidality. The discussion around how we talk about suicide is a very dangerous one in this community. You know, my my parents were told, "Do you want a dead daughter or a living son?" That's not an appropriate way to talk about that. And I not understand that, but and it is our it, trans masculine youth I understand that, that are at the highest risk I understand of that, and they deserve help. But we Think about that. Think about that. So you are a child who is feeling uncomfortable with your body. Let's say you're seven years old. You go to your parents and you tell your parents, I'm feeling uncomfortable with my body. And maybe it has something to do with my gender because you've gotten in the idea that it has something to do with your gender. Your parents take you to a gender specialist and they are on the fence about you transitioning. And the gender specialist sits down and tells your parents, do you want a dead son or a living daughter? What idea does that implant into your parents' brain? But also what idea does that implant into your brain? It insinuates that those are the only two options for yourself. So that if you don't go down the path of transition, this is the only other option for you. And then there's plenty of evidence to suggest that people who are going down the route of transition end up with the same problems and even more so because they've mutilated their bodies in pursuit of something that was not actually what they needed. So it's a double whammy there. And to not hold the people in medicine who are putting out this falsified information accountable is a crime, in my opinion. It is a crime being committed against young people right now. We also need to have a responsible conversation that is not using suicide as a means to push them down a pipeline before they have that comprehensive care. Yep. So I have a question. Sorry, Arise, I know you've been wanting to uh, say yeah, something. Yeah, no, because I have a big problem. Oh, yeah, no, so I, I'm not an interrupter. What I'm going to say is we insult children, uh, our youth, so much by taking away their autonomy and their own agency over their <sighs> own decisions and insulting that they know who they are. Like an adult knows who they are more than they do. No one knows who I am more than I do. Right. And it's always been that way. I've always known who I was. I've never felt like I was in the wrong body. Um, I just had to adjust my body. And so I. Did you hear that? <laughs> I never felt like I was in the wrong body. I just had to adjust my body. I never felt like I was in the wrong body. I just had to cut off my private parts, get them redone with what is a dangerous and largely experimental surgery. I had to get implants. I had to get facial feminization surgery in probably multiple rounds of filler, Botox, eyebrow lifting, all of this stuff to put your face in the proper place. I had to get hormone replacement therapy and undergo all of this and a whole bunch of other feminizing stuff to this person's body. But they do not think that they were born in the wrong body. They just had to adjust. I'm sorry. Guys, I don't even have to rebut it. I don't have to rebut it. I think taking away kids' agency and the right to their own body is, um, it's just, it's anti-human. I, I have a question. Kids will do millions of things that are harmful to themselves if you allow them. There is a reason that kids don't have full autonomy to just do whatever it is that they want. There is a reason that you don't leave a group of four-year-olds 
alone in a room that has knives and guns and, and weapons and all this stuff in it. You don't leave them alone in a room, period. There's a reason you don't do this. It's because kids, although they might have a strong sense of self and they might have strong personalities and nuances to themselves, they do not know everything. And when I say they do not knew, know everything, that is including knowing who you are to the deepest depths of yourself. Most adults do not know who they are to the deepest depths of themselves. And in fact, the whole entire premise of the human condition and human existence is to go about life trying to get to know yourself and most people don't even get there by the time that they die and you are telling me that it's robbing kids of autonomy to not allow them to change their gender and reassign their their sex it's, it's robbing them of a rich and full life of self-exploration and finding out who you really are. It's saying that the answer is just do this surgery and adopt this ideology and adopt this cl a closed packaged set of beliefs about yourself. And that's what's going to tell you everything about who you are and fully explain the world and make you happy and give you purpose and all this stuff. It's That's what a an ideology is. It's a closed system of beliefs that it's a box for your brain to think inside of. And that's what's so pernicious about this is you're giving someone this pre determined set of beliefs that's supposed to fully explain them. And the problem is, again, I, I, I keep harping on it, but the beliefs don't work in the real world. And yep. it, that's what constantly creates these, uh, the cognitive dissonance. It's what constantly creates the frustrations. And when you, we talk about, okay, there's a there's a strong depression and suicidality rate in this community, a fact, a major factor in that is you're, you're training yourself to think in a way that is incongruent with reality itself yep. and that is going to cause you a lifetime of struggle and at the same time that you're going all in on this ideology you're also not exploring everything else you could be you're not exploring who you are in without that box you're not exploring your gifts and your talents and everything that has made that makes you you because you're just being encouraged to be pushed further down into this ideology further down into the community the the, the community and they tell you this is what we're advocating for today this is where you find your purpose today join this and it's just all very reductive and it robs you of that ex that journey of exploration that we all go through and like almost said it that's a lifelong journey like yep. you know we, we're all still learning a lot about ourselves and and people change over time as well yeah and, and that's another reason why you don't do a permanent surgery in your youth or especially as a minor uh without a ton i mean even as an adult without a ton of reflection so you're like shh yeah. you never wanted this and people change people change their minds and i'm like sitting in my head now like be calm amala try to stay rational try to slow down in in your response to these people try to have understanding and patience for what they're saying but i'm now listening to a group of people who have made an irreversible decision for themselves and because they made that decision for themselves they're trying to give it to to other people and what this person just said saying well kids know their true selves they deserve that autonomy you have done the exact opposite to a child who you allow to transition. Kids maybe know something about themselves or know the inner workings of their own mind. Of course, nobody knows the inner workings of their own mind better than themselves. But if you allow a child to transition, you are robbing them of getting to know themselves. You are quite literally saying, here's this moment and I'm taking that away from you. Because to transition is to move against yourself. It is to move against your body. It's, it's, it's to move against who you are as a person and instead, trying to push yourself into a box because that's what you believe that you are. If a young boy grows up and he is feminine and he likes things that women likes and he has a female disposition to himself or his personality, the best thing that you can do is say, you're a feminine man. And I would love for you to express that in whatever way you see fit within the body that you were given. You don't then tell them, no, you're a girl. Now I need to to shove you in this box of girlhood by letting you undergo countless surgeries with repercussions that we are still not aware of to this day, by putting you on hormone replacement therapy, you are robbing that person of getting to know their true selves. Now, if that's something they want to do as an adult and they want to rob themselves of that experience in adulthood, we're all adults. We have agency and autonomy to do that for ourselves. But minors need to be protected. They are the most vulnerable and they are clearly the most susceptible to this ideology. And just to hear people who have already made the decision try to push children <laughs> down that route. Oh, wild. Do you wild. believe minors should be able to get tattoos or plastic surgery or consent to the list of other? I know it's not so different. So I different. They are different things, but to what no, level do we make that no, To what level do we give children bodily autonomy? And it's so funny because they're saying tattoos are so different. 
Plastic surgery is so different. I will allow them to make that argument and say they're different. They're far less harmful, far less harmful. If we are going to go down the path of allowing children to gender transition, go ahead and throw in plastic surgery. Go ahead and throw in tattoos because they're far less harmful than lopping off your breasts and your private parts. So why not allow your ideology to come to full fruition? Why not allow kids to go out and drink alcohol, smoke cigarettes, join the army? Why not? Because that's what you're saying. You are going to the most extreme depths of your dogma and saying change your entire sex. Do irreversible damage that you cannot get back. We're talking not being able to reproduce. Sterilization. Irreversible damage to your your to the totality of your body that you will never get back in its true form. Lack of sexual sensation. Problems with, with urination for some people who have undergone transition of their private parts. So many different things. The fluctuation of your hormones, your endocrine system. <laughs> Let's allow all of that, but no tattoos, right? No boob job, right? No joining the military, no drinking, no cigarettes, but you can do everything else. Over everything they do, because here's the thing, children need barriers in childhood development. You need barriers and Absolutely. they need a safe way to push against those barriers. And I worry with the current medical system that instead of giving them a safe way to express themselves and push against barriers, we have taken some of those barriers away. And that is why you see more detransitioners because those barriers have been lifted. Yeah, they're not Absolutely. just doling out surgeries for children. Right. That's not happening. I had a anywhere. letter from they a are. therapist in a single visit at the gender clinic office and before that was I had abuse the first. from that therapist who did yeah. not. So it is happening. Can I get you to, to say that it's happening then? This person said, she said, I went to a gender therapist. My first medical intervention, intervention was a double mastectomy. The first medical intervention was a double mastectomy. <laughs> Do you guys hear how insane that is? That's not even the first bit of medical intervention for women struggling with cancer of their breasts. They don't immediately jump to, jump to a double mastectomy. With, with women who are dealing with that. How is it that a child going, I feel confused in my body, can go to a gender clinic and the first bit of medical intervention is a double mastectomy? <laughs> I'm getting my mind blown in this video, watching this and listening to this. It's unbelievable. Psychoanalyze yeah, the rest of your issues. Right. And that shouldn't yeah, have you, shouldn't Your issues weren't being you. trans. There were a lot of other issues that mm. you were I have a diagnosis right of gender dysphoria as And well. you shouldn't, you were misdiagnosed. No, I have right. one. Yeah, you had to get a second opinion, honey. Guys, this is really testing me. I woke up this morning and I was like, okay, let me, let me meditate on life and just trying to have understanding and compassion for everybody. This is the greatest test of, of that right now to this very day. To look at this woman and say you were misdiagnosed with gender dysphoria shows how deeply confused and how deeply miseducated these people are on the issues of gender dysphoria and transgenderism. Having gender dysphoria does not mean you are a transgender person. I repeat, having gender dysphoria does not mean you are a transgender person. The feeling of being unaligned with the sex that you have in your body does not mean the next available route to you should be medically transitioning. This girl very well did struggle with her gender, and clearly so. You don't undergo a double mastectomy if you are not cl clearly struggling with your view of gender and your self-perception and dysphoria of some sort. So that diagnosis is perfectly real. And she and she does have gender dysphoria. There's, there's no doubt to that. For them to say that you have a misdiagnosis on this because she chose not to take the route that they chose, or at least actually did choose it, and then decided to go back on it, how can these people say they're genuine? And how was I, I, how was I supposed to do that when my parents were told that I would kill fault. myself? But your yeah, parents, your your parents their, their, are... biggest, their biggest crime in all this was trusting an, a medical system that they thought would help me and the professionals apparently not doing the right thing here. I understand, sure. but your yeah, parents were responsible for the decisions that were made on your behalf. Mm -hmm. I think that th what this really highlights is the importance of you sharing your story because yeah. what it mm -hmm. shows is that you can't jump into these transitions and you yeah. shouldn't listen to these doctors that push you to transition right. just Nobody because you're feeling a certain way. Mm -hmm. Social media brainwashes teens we should listen to, to you believe pushing that they're us trans. Yep. To do that. So says, social media brainwashes teens to believe that they are trans. Absolutely. On Absolutely. Like, thing about it right like yeah there's this there's this play that they have i don't think that it necessarily brainwashes yeah. children but i think there are a lot of people who get into being queer or trans because it's a it's it, 
it, it, it's trendy. And I know that's a really controversial statement to make as a trans person, but I have seen it, I've experienced it. And I also find that social media, especially apps like TikTok give a lot of these kids so much misinformation yes. and lead to people thinking they're trans when there are much deeper issues and everyone just wants to belong and find an identity, especially yep. when they're young. You I, know? I think I think brainwash is such a, a strong yeah, that's word a very to use there. Word. I would not, yeah, that's a, why I hesitated I, to step no, forward. And that's why yeah. I would step in and actually say it's more so of like a social contagion. It's just, yeah, yeah. I don't really see, I, I guess we can go into the, the semantics of, of brainwash versus social contagion, but the question becomes, Without social media, would this problem exist at the scale that it does? The answer is no. Yeah, everyone, that should be patently obvious to yeah. everybody. The answer is no. If kids were not growing up in social media and seeing these videos every single day and dealing with not only the issues and uh, mental health problems that social media brings about, but also the cocktail of having these groups on social media that are saying join us and you find community here and I felt the same way you feel and gender transition is what saved me. We would not be dealing with this if kids were not on social media. Just point blank period. You'd have the same sprinkle of transgender people in your population as we did prior to the the social media boom in America, but you would simply not have the numbers we're seeing right now. What got me to transition in the first place was social media. They had a grasp on me that there could be something else out in the world for me uh, during that discovery and I played it to the fullest, 100%. I even passed as a female uh, for a, a good, you know, what was it, five, six years out of the seven that I was a transition, that I transitioned. And later down the road, I went and paid out of pocket and talked to a, a just a regular therapist, and she made me start questioning my own existence in a way, mm. what I can do as a human being. Uh, not just as you know a male or a female, but what can I contribute to the society? And it made me open up to maybe I was I was born as a male, and it feels empowering to me. Yeah, I mean, I was heavy on social media, like in my mm -hmm. transition Tumblr. That was the place to be for sure, and everyone was talking about their transition from my experience and everyone was mm -hmm. talking about a lot of mental health issues, depression mm. and, and all of that. And it was kind of being wow. trendy in that sense. Like when TikTok came out, like that was like a whole nother world. And the biggest thing that I found with that is like, they weren't saying a lot of the negative things that were happening in their transition. There was always like a positive outlook on it. Like I'm being who I, who I need to be. Like, this is this great. This is the ticket to your happiness. Yeah. yeah. And I sold. like so much on social media, like I made a documentary on my transition and I really went into depth of like a lot of my depression that I dealt with on that. And mm -hmm. I didn't find anyone talking about that. Mm -hmm. Jen, I personally didn't think I was trans till I saw earlier trans YouTubers before I was just gender bending men. <laughs> and for sure, I also feel like comparing yourself on social media to other people that are more beautiful and successful will create dysphoria of some kind. It will, yeah, and sure. some people, it will affect your self image yeah. for sure. Yep. Cause we yeah. see all those beautiful trans women that are all dolled up or had every possible plastic surgery they could ever get. You're gonna feel dysphoria. You're gonna be like, I don't look like that. And that's so General, though, you know what yeah, I mean? Whether yeah. you're right. cis or trans, everyone so is, social media is has dealing such with that. I've sure. that. It has such at, a you know, bad impact. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I wanted to be that muscular dude, and 100%. I wanted to do that. So. Yep. I mean, it's bad for just everybody. Everybody who uh, has that propensity to just compare yourself to others, which most people do. Let's be real. You're on social media. You're comparing yourself to other people in some way, shape, or form. Theirs just happen to be on the basis of gender and and transitioning. And I appreciate that she brought up Tumblr because Tumblr was like the breeding ground for so many of the new gender identities that we're seeing right now. And it's uh, you know was a female bent platform, which explains a lot of the numbers that we're seeing right now with young women in particular who are dealing with gender trans gender dysphoria and, and transitioning at higher rates and it was just people finding a space on the internet where they could yes be free with the things that they were thinking but also just build all of these contrived identities that they were then putting out on the internet and people were taking to and to not see the correlation between social media and things like tumblr instagram and youtube and the rapid onset of people identifying as transgender i mean if you can't make that link honestly then it, it's hard to trust anything that's that you that you say 
if if that regardless if even if you think kids should be able to transition and and transgender is completely valid and you can switch genders and you should be able to change your pronouns and all these things even if you think those things you should be able to also independently be able to deduce that social media has been a major catalyst in making people think that they are part of this community Oh, yeah, it is it such has, a it is such a bad exists. like well documented bad impact on people's like sense right. of like sense of but self I, and mental health and so. But I also really quickly just want to say like I don't want people to think that like social media is turning yeah. people trans. Yeah, we agree with that. All right, can the disagree step forward? Yeah. Okay. So my thought. At what point does it become social media is turning people trans? Because, if, as I said before, if you got rid of social media, we wouldn't be dealing with this. So, I mean, how is that statement not true? <laughs> yeah, uh, social media influences how you think and, and what you believe. It gives you, like, the, the story of gender dysphoria and what to do once you, if you're experiencing that. Like, that is what, if you go on social media, the, the, the portrait of the world that you get if you're on TikTok, if you're on Tumblr, if you're on these platforms, that's your the whole narrative, the whole world that's being presented to you is one of gender identity. It's one of finding your true self and by going down these these paths. And so how could you not say? And so that's not to say that the gender dysphoria that people experience through social media is not real. It yes. is a real gender dysphoria, but it still came from social media as a, as a social contagion. Right. It just feels kind of semantics. That's on social media and everyone suddenly looking or being trans. Um, I think whoever is leaning towards that or looking towards that or looking towards being trans for answers was always someone that felt that way or felt some type of way about their gender or their identity or the way they present themselves. They're just gonna go that way. I know plenty of femme twinks who went the muscle queen pipeline. It's not a rare occurrence. And so just experience your life, have fun. Try not to take social media seriously because no one is advertising their failures. It's all fake. Yeah, but I, I think it is. Because you're saying two things at the same time. You're saying, I don't think, I think people all, all they naturally have this feeling about themselves and they find social media and then it validates it. Uh, but, but social media is fake and you need to acknowledge that social media is fake. But these people are naturally going to be that way anyways. What about like women who start developing anorexia? because they get on social media and they're following, you know, the Alexis, Alexis friends of the world or the Kim Kardashians or whatever. And these people who are changing weight at any given moment. And suddenly you have a young girl with a eating disorder, which is quite prominent here in the United States of America and in other countries alike. Would you not say that social media is a catalyst in, in that happening? And that maybe if those young women unplugged from their phones and weren't looking at pictures of other women constantly who are showing off fake bodies and fake highlight reels of their results, don't you think that problem would be alleviated and greatly so? So at what point do you say that social media is brainwashing individuals into feeling the way that they feel? Now, of course, they might already have a little bit of insecurity that is built into them, as most people do. But if you can find that social media is harvesting all people's insecurities and making them into consumers of whatever their respective insecurity is and trying to alleviate that for themselves, then social media is brainwashing people across the board. It doesn't even have to be just people with their gender. It's just brainwashing people in general. It's also like, important to that, say that yeah, like yeah. social media is very, very effective. You know, I, I mean, I personally scroll on TikTok and I'm like, do I have OCD? Do I have autism? Like all these different things. And like it, it can suck you in. Yes. Um, so it's important to be aware of those things. I have a question for Samantha. But she didn't walk forward when asked if social media was brainwashing people into thinking they were trans. The dissonance is so real, guys. It's so real. It's not the thing that I believe in that affects me that that is caused by it, but everything else. Right. The know? OCD, the ADHD, you know, the, all the women who are on Adderall because they find out on TikTok that they should be on it. Valid. Mm -hmm. And in fact, probably, you know, you need to watch what you watch on social media. But me, <laughs> trans stuff. No, absolutely not. As you have the largest platform here, do you believe over the years you've inspired people to transition? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think that I've inspired people to believe that it's okay to be transgender, it's okay to express themselves, and that it's possible to live a happy and successful life. How do you feel about the fact that some of them are gonna regret the body modifications they got and gonna have like- I think that they should go to a doctor that is well-versed in gender care and have mm -hmm. the appropriate um, psychoanalytic 
analysis done beforehand. Mm -hmm. That's okay. not my and problem. And I, I feel like a lot of folks are going to social media looking for possibility models. Sure. They're looking to see if they're okay. I know for me, when I was when I was very young, looking to see if there were other people like me, because for a long time I thought that I was the only one. The, exactly. I yep. thought I was right? the only one. And yeah. so feeling like that, like suicide was was a thing for me, me too. right? And so when I did see a possibility, Marty, when I did see somebody that looked like me, that put me in a space where I was like, oh, I'm right, okay. Right. Sigh of relief. Right. I will say there's also a difference from like showing people that you can have a positive life and then telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think you on your channel are kind of like, hey, look what I was able to do and mm -hmm. how this made me feel. Mm -hmm versus like, you should do this because I did this. Yeah. Right. So and I'm also, I, I try my best to be very upfront right. about Because yeah. yeah. we can't help if exactly. someone's gonna change their mind on something, mm -hmm. like that's inevitable. Yeah, we're that's humans. true. And I have to jump yeah. on one more thing with that. Like, if I'm watching her channel and it inspires me to transition, I have been watching white straight men be president for years mm. and I've not wanted to be president once. So I don't identify <laughs> with that. We're gonna talk about brainwashing. Let's talk about where we see things every single day happening mm -hmm. a certain way versus yeah, someone just sure. living their life authentically. Oh. Wow. People with I don't even dysphoria. know. I, 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 I think I just short circuited. I. Okay. Need therapy, <laughs> not surgery. What was the What was the prompt? I, I missed it too. <laughs> People still... with gender dysphoria need therapy, not surgery. Right. I think, in a general sense, yes. For the most yeah, part. I'm gonna have to agree with that one. I don't. Convinced. We all agree. <laughs> I think it's, it's potentially both, though. Yes. I think yeah. everyone with gender dysphoria mm -hmm. needs to go through a therapeutic mm -hmm. process yeah. and mental health care before they make that choice for themselves. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I personally confused a lot of my gender dysphoria for body dysmorphia because no matter how much I feminize my body, so today I still don't feel comfortable in my own body. And now, like looking among like members of trans community, I see that people keep on getting more and more surgeries. The, the surgeries are no longer affirming. You can just tell that this person is like struggling with body images. Yeah. I was able to get on estrogen pretty quickly when I was 22 and my mental health declined afterwards and I attributed it to being still in the wrong body, needing more body modification, I end up getting sex reassignment surgery. I do believe that transition was sold to me as a hardware fix for my mental issues that were not addressed. I still struggle with internalized homophobia that pushed me into transition in the first place. I struggle with borderline personality disorder, body dysmorphia, I'm mm. on a spectrum, I'm ADHD, and I have all those issues um, that were not helped and I was still struggling with them after transition and I still do. Overall, after a few years, I came to a conclusion that I was not in the wrong body, that I'm a gender non-conforming man, and I am a feminine man, that's what I am. I, I don't know if you guys have heard, but I've wow. had a lot of binary trans people say that it's not a mental health issue, like, if you're trans, and I know I don't agree with that, like, I think there's a disconnect between the mind and the body. I guess I'm asking that, like, it's like, do you think that it's a mental health disorder? And I don't think being therapy. transgender is, is a mental right. health disorder. disorder. Right. I think, right. you know, gender incongruence is what they're referring to it as now. Um, it's listed as a sexual health concern. But the gender dysphoria, which is the symptom that arises when you are transgender, is a mental health concern. So maybe I'm thinking of, like, that's what I'm right. trying yeah. to say yeah. then in a right. sense. And then yeah. once you are diagnosed with gender dysphoria, and I feel like this is kind of what the prompt is kind of hinting at, if you do have gender dysphoria, the only treatment for that is transition. Right. Whether that be just a social transition, a medical transition, whatever transition fits you, that is the only way to heal your gender dysphoria. Not true. Absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. If you guys want to hear more about that subject matter, I recommend that you go listen to uh, Dr. Deborah So, who we've had on the show to discuss that exact phrase there, that you can be gender dysphoric without being transgender and without needing to transition. So. Not the case, <laughs> and just not true. Um, but I, I do want to address and, and go back to to listen to again what was said here. Is it a mental health disorder? disorder? Was it a mental health disorder? That was the question. I mean, we can recategorize it, right? And we can write new literature and new scientific journals on reclassifying gender dysphoria and gender incongruence. It's a mental health disorder it's a mental health disorder if I was looking in the mirror and thinking that I was obese and develop anorexia or bulimia and this need to transform my body to fit my perception uh, that I have of myself you would be telling me I have a mental health disorder and I don't know honestly there's a, there's a lot of things going on here 
Shape, who was just talking, mentioned internalized homophobia and growing up as a man who who liked other men and then going, oh, well, no, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. So because I've internalized this homophobia towards my own self, I'm going to transition to be a woman and going through all these different surgeries. I think there's that. I also think there's internalized stigma around mental health because you should be able to acknowledge that this is a mental health disorder. I can think of no other reason why you would not want to do that unless there is a stigma surrounding mental health and an insecurity that people feel around admitting that they do have a mental health disorder. And I, I if you're if you are quite literally saying your mind does not match your body, you have a mental health disorder. And that's not something that's necessarily wrong. It's not something that's bad. It is just something to be acknowledged. If you are seeking out gender therapists and medical treatment for an incongruence between the mind and the body, you have a mental health disorder. And that that should be able to acknowledge to be acknowledged. We had Buck Angel on the show, who is a transsexual uh, man, a biological female, and recognizes that he's a biological female and talks about having undergone sex reassignment and all these different things and says, yes, it is a mental health disorder. And I don't know why that cannot be acknowledged. I said to him, I'm going to do this. Either you're going to be the dad that accepts me and supports me through it or like goodbye. Um, and he chose to support me and we're closer than ever now. And I think a lot of us go through medical transitions to easier go through social transition. Yeah, definitely. Right. And yeah. so a lot of our folks that, that do transition and may detransition, both, both uh, experiences are valid, but also um, understanding that we're, we're not mentally ill because we're trans. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that there should be a psychiatrist or someone in within behavioral health to be able to say, okay, you're in the right frame of mind mm -hmm. to make this decision. But I, I want to just make it very clear that trans people are not dealing with mental health because they're trans. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I disagree. I feel like tran transgender is definitely, and elderly trans people afford for it to be classified as mental illness, so it's covered by insurance. Otherwise, why are you getting the surgeries to, mm -hmm. because well, if it's not a medical condition. <laughs> For you, it's a medical condition. Uh, the is, mind. It's in your head. You, I would say that you have some kind of mental disorder if you're, you're right. trying to mimic a stereotype of opposite sex. Right. To right. Pass it's in not society. a mimic. It's, the it's treatment aligning. for this mental illness is to transition. I, I have a question though, yeah. because it's not a mimic. It's aligning. So you mentally think you are something that your body is incongruent with, which would classify as a mental disorder, and you feel the need to align your mind to your body through surgeries and hormones and just lots of damage lots and lots of damage i just there's no other way to package it other than a mental disorder there's no other way to package it i have a gender dysphoria diagnosis i always have but i'm still where i am today can i give I, you my honest opinion i think that you were probably misdiagnosed i don't it, think i was so you, do, do you, you do feel have dysphoria for in your body i certainly do now yeah me too okay. Yeah. Well, because I mean, of the you want, you, want, you want to talk about now, but at the time, I at the time I, at the time I genuinely believed I did. I thought it would save me, and then looking back, I realized that my dysphoria stemmed from some severe trauma that was not handled. Yeah. Right. So much here. So Samantha is saying that gender dysphoria, the only form of treatment, is either social or medical transition. The only form of treatment. We're also not acknowledging that gender dysphoria can be transitory. Like it can be a, a stepping stone that you go through in your life. It doesn't have to be something that you are consistently labeled with for the rest of your life. And that's another issue with the way that we address mental health and mental illness. Being diagnosed with something does not mean that this is something that you are going to struggle with for the rest of your life. And we'll use another body dysmorphia issue that you could have. And that could be, uh, you know, anorexia, bulimia and, and these sort of health disorders that are in reference to weight. Being diagnosed with anorexia or bulimia does not mean you will have that for the rest of your life. It does not mean you will have these feelings and insecurities towards your body for the rest of your life either. And the same is should and is to be said about gender dysphoria. So this person was not misdiagnosed and even now is talking about feeling dysphoric, although it may be due to the medical transition. But at that time when they went to the doctor and said, I am feeling gender incongruence within my mind and body, that is still gender dysphoria. <laughs> and... 
it's just interesting that they feel the need to invalidate in order to validate their own feelings about themselves, which is what they're telling people that they should do. You should affirm yourself. You should validate people in their feelings, except when the feelings are antithetical to their way of life and to their agenda, which is exactly what Luca is bringing to the table. And that's why I think that mental step, like mental health step is so important. Yeah, because I've heard this from several other, you know, most, mostly female detransitioners who we had some form of pretty bad trauma yeah. that spawned gender dysphoria symptoms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, we can disagree about misdiagnosis and something we lay, but the, it, it felt real at the time for me. Yeah, no, I'm sure it did. I didn't mean and that. No, yeah, I, know, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things where that's where the mental health treatment really needs to come in and get to the root of that issue because oftentimes, specifically with the detransitioners I've talked to, that was ignored. You know, I, I came out to my parents in a mental health facility after telling the therapist that I thought I was transgender. And she told me, I, we had to tell your parents so that way you can get the help you need. It led to me seeing a, a gender therapist who, honestly, the issues I was facing were never addressed. To this day, no one ever addressed the fact that I had severe like trauma and exploitation going on as a young teenager. Instead, I was kind of just affirmed in, you believe this, and instead of even just a little pushback, it led me to the point where the, the very first medical intervention I ever had was a double mastectomy at 16. A few months after that, I started testosterone because it was the next step of what I was supposed to do. God intended for there to be only two genders. Well, you know my stance on this. I'm not, I'm not a religious person, but I think if you erased the human mind today and we all got memories wiped by the men in black device that they all use, and we had to reconfigure all of the scientific knowledge we've ever had as a, a species, we would come to the conclusion that there are two sexes. It doesn't matter. We, we would figure it out almost immediately. We would figure it out, in fact. Okay, you go first. Okay, so as a Christian, I truly believe that God created male and female and he had created that throughout life, throughout the nature, uh, throughout the wildlife, throughout, you know, earth itself. And then the arguments come up into the ocean sides of, well, there's these asexual creatures and stuff mm. like that. Well, they were designed that way for a reason. And we humans were not designed to, uh, we were designed to procreate and be able to bring life back to the earth because we live and we die, we live and we die. We, it's a rotation of, of a process of life in itself and it's its own journey. So I truly do believe that there is male and there is female, but I can respect people's choices. However, that's where I stand on it. Yeah, I mean, just even outside of the religious uh, talking here, we as a species, and I mean, just down to the basic form of being of, of species have grown so incongruent with nature. <laughs> and it's through things like technology and ideology and just external influence that we've allowed this to happen. But there are so many issues that, of course, in, in consciousness, of course, but uh, so many issues that we deal with as humans that just you don't see in any other species ever. You don't see in any other species. You're not seeing, you know, any other mammalian species dealing with issues of obesity. You're not seeing them deal with issues of, you know, uh, long-term depression or anything like that. And they are species just like us. And uh, many animals just as capable as feeling the things that we feel, having the same issues that we have. To think that through technology and just weird influence and of course ideology that we have not developed a specific set of uniquely human issues that could be solved through uh, the regulating of these things within our own minds, hearts, souls, whatever, whatever you believe. It, it's just the truth. <laughs> it is just the truth. We are creating a whole set of problems with, uh, uh, for ourselves in this sort of postmodern society and they are uniquely human issues and in decades from now there will be new ones and it's just not going to happen anywhere else you will never see it anywhere else well i'm not christian but i do believe there's only two biological sexes and somehow that's how it's been designed whether it's by higher power or by evolution 
I do believe gender expression has been on a spectrum for centuries. So we do have references to people who've been cross-dressing. We have sure. references to eunuchs. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who went through a transition and detransition, when I started taking testosterone, it's almost like reminded me of my original blueprint. And I feel like I went against my original blueprint and I did a lot of damage to mm -hmm. it. And I just cannot go back to mm -hmm. who I was because without my Thank testicles, you, I'm just too far gone in my transition. So that's where I'm at. Mm. Can they disagree a step forward? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You it's interesting. I was watching uh, this Russell Brand video uh, of an interview he did with the guy who's coming out against like big food and big pharma and talking about the relationship between food, especially in the United States and our bodies and minds. And he talked about that argument that I made prior uh, by comparing humans to other animals. And he was talking about the issue of obesity. And he said, you know, there's no other animal species on earth that is dealing uh, with obesity on mass scale like humans are dealing with obesity. And he said, you know what, actually, let's reframe it. There are animals that deal with obesity only when they are domesticated by humans. So you think of like obese dogs and cats because the humans take them in and are overfeeding them with their shit food and the stuff that's overprocessed that they're getting from the grocery store and just handing down to their animals. That's what's happening here. It's like we are creating these uniquely human problems and just pushing them on to other generations and pushing them on to people younger and younger and younger and younger. And had you just left them alone, had you not sort of domesticated these mental health issues and repackaged them and reframe them to be something more palatable for people so they would be more willing to take on irreversible damage to their bodies, we would not be dealing with this problem. We are just repackaging garbage and selling it down to people and essentially ruining their lives. And that might not be the case for everybody who's present in these videos. These people very well uh, may be genuinely happy in the bodies that they are, are now carrying around with them. But that is not going to be the case for many of the children and young people who are dealing with issues of gender right now. And it's because humans just have this need to create things like this. <laughs> Yeah, I think that also speaks to the influence of just technology and the advancement of, of civilization that we live in such a, a, a cushy time where food is so readily accessible. And, you know, like our ancestors were having to go out and, you know, hunt animals and defend themselves against warring tribes and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and didn't have time for obese, didn't have enough resources for obesity uh, and did not have enough time in the day to worry about things like gender dysphoria mm -hmm. or, you know, ADHD or whatever. I mean, maybe some primitive form of some of those things sort of right. existed. But if you boil these things down to like the core elements of just being human, uh, you, it's not there's a huge influence of just having way too much time on our hands and way too much ease. And we've we've become so comfortable that we've invented problems for ourselves. And that's what Jordan Peterson said. He, uh, he's, he said, like, if, if if humans got to a place where we can create the sort of utopia that so many progressives want to create, we would just mess it all up anyway, because we need some sort of conflict to find. And I feel like society, we've we've come into a place where uh, it, things are so easy on like the level of just the basic needs being met for our humanity that all these other problems are sort of introducing themselves because we're we don't have anything better to do yeah and we have certainly just not prioritized health on a human form in, in human form we have not prioritized that whatsoever if you look at the information we're taking in the effect of technology on our minds the disgusting food that we're eating and to think that over generations time that that is not affecting our mental health and the way that our brains are forming and the, just the cognition of our brains to think that that's not the case, I think is would be naive. Uh, and I think there's a reason that these generations in particular and people living today are so susceptible to depression, anxiety, gender dysphoria, body dysphoria, all of these things. It's just with it's not gender incongruence. It's incongruence with nature. We are completely incongruent with nature in all ways that you very well could be. Uh, and that's why we're here. Yeah, no. Real quick, I'm thinking too the the you know we we just released that vlog with Cam Haynes and that was like you want to get in touch with nature go spend a day with Cameron Haynes and like yep. be forced to climb a mountain and then push your body to like run several miles and lift and do all that like you you get a, just a feeling of like that brings you down to earth it brings you out of so sucks you out of social media world 
right back into reality and you are faced with your own mortality yeah. you're faced with just you know, like even the ice bath portion of it it's just it, it, I, we've gotten to a place in in time where human beings are just so out of touch with the not just the physical world but mm-hmm. just even material reality and we we've we've got our the the way that we navigate the world has become so ideological and it's become this like house of cards of like postmodern ideas and these new ideas and this new thing from social media and this new thing from this TV show and the culture has just become it's so like it's so shallow and weak yeah. because we've gotten so far away from the deep roots of just like what it what it even is to exist and just what it is to you know like we used to build our our lives and our and chart our path in the world based on building on tradition, building on history, building on what we've learned and standing on the shoulders of scientific discovery and progress through history. And now we've gotten so ideological that we're yeah. just building on ideology. And then we, right. put, we put this ideology as the foundation of our lives. And then we're surprised when it fails us and, and we plant our go to plant our foot on it and it just collapses. And then we, it's rather than allowing that to negotiate us back to reality and help us go back, we just blame reality for being wrong and say, no, my ideology was right. And that's what I'm getting with from a lot of these people in this video that are stuck in it. It's like they it cannot enter their minds that that the right answer can it can be anything other than transition. Right. There's other answers, and <laughs> this is a, everybody's implicated in this. Like I just started thinking recently that I don't think I would say if you tried to find the amount of human beings on Earth right now who are truly living in the moment that they are in, the moment present right in front of them, who are truly connected to the world that they're living in, connected to the Earth that they're living on, you would have very few humans uh, if you if you were, were able to test that somehow. And I'm not present in the, the very moment that I'm in half the time. How many times are you sitting down in wherever you are in your respective area thinking about something else your your mind is somewhere else you are looking at somebody else's life you are watching somebody else's life on tv you're watching a fictional version of what somebody else's life possibly could be written by some joe schmo in la who filmed it and put it on tv in front of you we are in a great depression of living in the moment and i think if people could strive for that more or try to seek that and find that in their lives it would dispel a lot of the issues that people are dealing with right now when you are disconnected from the present moment that you are in you are disconnected from your mind you are disconnected from your body mentally things are everywhere all of the time and i think 99.9 percent of humans are in that very same space and of course it's natural it's natural you have other things going on you have other issues you have things next week that you need to worry about and right now is often not the most attractive place to be but damn like we need to go touch grass y'all we need to go literally like i don't know i'm gonna start a hippie movement i feel like it's just like we need to go just sit outside for freaking 30 minutes in the morning and just (laughs) ground yourself in where you are because it's contributing to all of this, yeah. all of this problem. Someone in the chat said dopamine detox. And I think that's, that's picturesque. My wife gets on to me because a lot of times I'll go in the shower and like bring my phone in there and play uh, one of the sports podcasts I listen to while I'm in the shower. Cause yep. I can't just like be yep. and just like sit there. Like, what am I going to do is I'm going to get bored. If I'm just in the shower, I go to the bathroom without, without my phone, like yeah. God forbid. And a while ago, a couple of weeks ago, I went on a run and I like left my phone in the house while I went for a run. And uh-huh. it was like, <laughs> whoa like, right i'm out here it was like i felt like you know like my cat when he goes outside and he's like oh it's like a big scary world out here like i'm away from my phone like i'm out in the world i felt so vulnerable you yeah know? And i'm just like you know my dad used to drive us without a freaking cell phone from tulsa oklahoma to minneapolis minnesota and like nine hour drive in the middle of the night and you're just all you have is an atlas and gas and if you something happens you're just yeah. Screwed. And we're so out of touch with an experience like that. Like I'm like a run around my neighborhood freaks me out. Yeah. Like how weak and just plugged into this stuff are we? We need to be constantly stimulated. Mm-hmm. And if you think about when this technology was born and was able to just be in our pockets, we're talking about like the last 20 years. Yeah. That is all we're talking about. Do you, can you see guys like, like if you walk outside and obviously if you're living in the country, maybe this is not the same problem that we have in cities and stuff like that, but it's this. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, all the time. And this has only happened within the past couple of decades. Is that not fucking insane? Does that not blow your mind that we were that quick to be just completely overhauled by this and by this and just by technology in general and just not 
wanting to be where we are and just needing constant stimulation. It scares me too. I'm the same way. I'm like, it's really silent. I want music right now. Like mm. I need something to listen to. I need something that's stimulating my brain. I need something so much so that music has become something that keeps me in the moment that I'm in because it's like, oh, I can only focus on this thing right now. And this is taking me in the moment. I'm not in my anxieties. I'm not in thoughts from past or present or future or all these things. I just have something else to focus on. Mm. And that is not good. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do, we need to figure out like a video for you to do like a dopamine detox or like have the, the audience go along with us on like a 30 day journey. Of right. Like, I set my phone in a safe for two hours a day or something like yeah. that. And just, or I didn't have my phone after 5 PM in it at all or something like that. We, we need to do that. something. We yeah. need to do something because <laughs> something's got to change here. Guys, we don't have enough time to keep continuing going through this episode. Let us know if you want a part two. I know we talk about gender issues a lot. I think this one has sparked some very fascinating conversations. So let me know if you want us to do a part two, maybe on Wednesday of this. We need to get into Super Chats because y'all have been blowing it up. Let's, yeah. uh, I don't have all of them. I'll pull them up here. Okay, I'll let second. Taylor read them through. Okay. Um, supers. Sorry, guys, we're still scrappy here. All right, we're going to go this view. But yeah, maybe uh, we'll do some detox videos on the, <laughs> the channel because... I need it. Oh Lord my knows. gosh, there's so many super chats today. Okay, we'll go All through right. them. Rapid Speed round. fire. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, we've got Ruth and Amsden says, so proud of you, Amala. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Diva Dawn says, the Amala flashbacks are the best. Love it. Thank I'm cringing, guys. I'll cringe for you guys. <laughs> Only you guys. Scar King says, congrats, Oms. Oh, that's a nice little nickname. I like that. Congrats, Oms. You make da gooda content tay. <laughs> Thank you. The little Italian hands emoji. Appreciate it. All right. Vicky Bell says, I love the Blossom Buck Angel Debate episode. That's how I discovered the show, and I've watched every video since. Oh, wow. my gosh. Dedicated. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you, glad Vicky. that was your introduction to us, because that was an interesting video. You probably I was making Jim Halpert faces the whole time. I was like... I, I thought we would lose all our subscribers after that one. So that's that's good that we at least got one. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, Scorpio Maxwell says, salutations and congratulations, Kamala Harris. Uh, one million subscribers. Uh, thank you. Wow. I'll take it. I'll uh, take it. That's kind of backhanded. I don't know. Uh, Dharma Initiative says, love your approach to controversial issues with grace, intelligence, and kindness. Did, did I get too heated today, guys? I was feeling the heat in my heart on this one. This was really difficult. I'm amazed. And sh kudos to these people for staying calm in this conversation because I can't even watch it and stay calm. With some of the things that were being said. Uh, I'm, I've kind of started to hit a wall with the gender stuff. I'm just so tired of it. Like the, the Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light thing we saw come out this week. It's just like, dude, I can't even do a video on that. Yeah, <laughs> like Bud even... Light, like why? <sighs> why? Who is your target audience for that? <sighs> Anyways. Mm, um, the rest of Dharma Initiative's thing says, I am 47 this week and inspired by young people like you and the team. Heart emoji, heart oh, emoji. Oh, happy birthday. Thank happy you. belated. Or is it your birthday later on in the week? I don't know. But happy mm. birthday. 47. Uh, Gabriel Shapiro says, just don't burn the place down. Congratulations. <laughs> from the candle or something? Could be from the shelf falling. Could be from the candle. Could be from me getting heated in this video. We will try not to burn the place <laughs> could down. Could be all that fire that she's spitting, those takes. <laughs> um, Diva Dawn says, happy to see all of you receive so much love. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Diva Dawn. H Hank Hill Homeowner says, Amala is clean burning and efficient like propane. Thank you. I try to be... Hey. They're like method acting this uh, Hank Hank Hill. That's from that show, Ki King of King, King of the, the Hill. King of the Hill, yeah. King of the Hill. So almost I clean, burning, and efficient like propane. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. Artsy Witchcraft says, "Congrats, Amelie. You all deserve it. I made an art piece for your one mil, but I can't wait to see more of your content. Keep it up. You made an art piece. Are you sending it to the PO box? Yeah, I would send love it to, to us see or it. post it in Discord. We'll yeah, sure post it in it. Discord. I would love to see it. Love to see that." Uh, up North Society says we should have 1,000 likes. Hopefully, we have 1,000 likes by now, guys. If you haven't liked the video yet, drop it. It's drop the like. Stream. I don't know what it does for YouTube, but we appreciate it. I know everyone's <laughs> always like, "You gotta like it, guys, please, for the love of God." I'm like, Smash the like I'm really not sure what it does, but it does help us. It's a way to support the show for free, so thank you very much. The PO box for those of you asking in the chat is on a PragerU.com. I think if you slash go to contact yeah. slash contact, yeah, you can find a PO box if you'd like to to send me a letter or anything, or yeah, get in touch. Yeah, it's pre-screened, so don't send anything weird. Yeah, don't. <laughs> anthrax. No anthrax, yeah. please. Uh, Saverick says, Leonardo da Vinci, quote, knowledge is power. He is wrong. My correction, it's how we mm. harness what we perceive as knowledge that would give said power. Yeah, 
I think there's there's room for interpretation. There's definitely room. I th- I think exactly what you said is is true. It's how we take in the knowledge and w- where we apply it that is certainly what makes us the most powerful. Hundred percent. Yeah, it, yeah. You can get knowledge about critical race theory, and that can inform your worldview, and that can right. lead you in a very bad path. So, uh, <sighs> truth is power. <laughs> truth is power. Uh, when are you, Caitlin Whiting says, when are you guys getting merch? I so badly need a poster or hoodie so I can have you as an inspiration every day. Yes. Happy million guys. I was working on it yesterday. I posted a sneak peek on my Instagram story a few days ago. So if you weren't following me on Instagram, you didn't get to see the sneak peek. But it's cool streetwear, dope. There's going to be sweatshirts. There's going to be hoodies. I'm just working on getting the final name of the, the clothing line before we get it printed and on a website for you guys. So there's a lot of work I got to do on the back end, making the site getting the the designs getting them printed and everything but it is coming soon and it is very good quality so i'm excited for you guys to see it right 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 um the nicodemus 1984 says congratulations to you and your awesome team for reaching the one million so well deserved as usual a pleasure to listen to you and let's go on the two million road let's get it already plugging along Stephanie Fonseca says, wish everyone had to go through Ari's process. Instead, they affirm based on feelings before they're even 18 because they see therapy as someone trying to fix them. Yep. Oh, gosh. I have, you know, I I have a lot to say about minors in in transition. Probably nothing that I have not said before. (laughs) But yes, I feel the same. Bears repeating. Uh, Demons are calling. Oh, Lord. Says, I appreciate your content so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you. Uh, Diva Dawn, again, says, all they need to do is look at Jazz Jennings to know kids should not go through surgical intervention. That kid is falling apart and has been for years. One example of many. And that poor, 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 poor Jazz. Oh, my gosh. I could do a whole video on that, too. But we didn't talk about Jazz, although I've seen the recent videos of Jazz Jennings. Horrific. Sad. Yeah. Dixon Butts, welcome back. Welcome back, buddy. Says, uh, the people pushing this stuff to kids know what they're doing is wrong deep down, which is why they want to believe it is good so badly. If it's not okay, that means they've ruined countless children's lives. Mm -hmm. Who's going to make that admission, right? Right. Not many people. Yeah, there's like there's one thing where you've like staked your worldview on a certain belief, and so you need it to be true. So then your brain, instead of trying to perceive truth, uh, works to justify the beliefs that you already have. And then there's the sunk cost of, oh, I've already left this wake of damage and I've already, if I admit I'm wrong about this, I have to also take responsibility for all the things mm-hmm. that I'm responsible for in pushing this. And that is even, you know, it puts more weight on the scale of like, I just need this to be true even more. Yep. So yeah, it happens around. It, happens. it does happen. Um, Kofi Quay says, Amala, congratulations on one million. Your Thank eloquence, you. intelligence, and patience are unparalleled in conservative media. <laughs> Keep up the good work. That was an oh, eloquent comment. That was an eloquent comment. Kofi, Kofi Quay. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, Dharma Initiative again says, Jennifer Bilek is an independent investigative journalist of the 11th Hour blog. She traced the motivations to transhumanism using transgenderism as a stepping stone. They want to monetize us all. This is where I wish I had a, a conspiracy theory. Button. Yeah, we need go, one. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to read more about that. I don't know that I'm convinced by that argument. I could see where somebody could make the connection, but I don't think that most people uh, are consciously motivated by that idea. Depends. I haven't. But we do love the conspiracy theories. We and do. Mama, oh my we'll gosh! Go and don't hole. don't get me started on mattress firm guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Savrick says the identities are equivalent to a placebo as well. The identities are, oh, well, yeah, yeah. They're like, I switched and I chose the identity. Now I feel better Mm. because somebody told me I was going to feel better. And yeah, they gave it to me and now I have it. It's like giving somebody apple juice and telling them it's alcohol. Flying Tigers says, Amala, you and your show rock in so many ways. On to two million. Thank you. Thank you. Kat McCollum, we are all born in the wrong body, the human body. Congrats (laughs) on one million, Amala. (laughs) And friends, you deserve it. Thank you. After I hit 30, I felt like I was born with the wrong human body. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, no, Scorpio Maxwell says, how is this any different from the church pushing gay conversion therapy to save lives? Wait, what? How is what any different? I guess pushing gender transition or gender affirmative care. Oh, okay, because you're saying as... internalized homophobia. I think that's what they're speaking to. I mm. mean, yeah, uh, they're, I don't know much about gay conversion therapy but i imagine yeah the principle is the same to run away from the feeling that you have uh 
in, instead of facing it and analyzing it and seeing where it's coming from. Yeah. Uh, 810 Warthog, finally caught alive. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Glad Sa- you caught alive. <laughs> Savricks again. Boundaries of perception mustn't become barriers. This is true. That is true. I like that. That was deep. Over Easy Egg says, uh, congratulations, Amala and crew. I love what you do. The independent thought on this channel is so refreshing, and I'm always Thank waiting you. eagerly for your next video. You're my favorite news anchor, LOL. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> so sweet. Always waiting for the next video. We're trying. We're trying. We're, we're hustling, yeah. baby. I was I was teaching myself how to edit videos yesterday, so. Yeah, we're going to try to start doing another uh, medium-length video a week. So right now we're doing three live streams a week, two like short form eight to 12 minute videos and then shorts every day. And we're trying to add another, another one. video maybe for the weekend. So we're hustling baby. So keep those super chats coming so we can <laughs> pay some people to edit these. <laughs> or I'll just do it. To do it ourselves. I'll learn how to edit. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm learning. Don't, Jack of all trades. Don't judge our editing guys. <laughs> <laughs> judge Scott's. He's really good. But, yeah. Um, Diva Don says preach. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Julian Tom says, we are, why are we allowing children to alter themselves into definitions of things that change every minute? Good. This is true. Question. Uh, over Easy Egg again. And I can't leave out my boy Taylor. It wouldn't be the same without you. And the contrast between yours and Amala's takes on religion is perfect. By the way, your Discord is wild. LOL. Let Tell Floofy I said bagel. <laughs> okay. There's a lot going on. There's one. a lot going on but in the Discord. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we appreciate the love oh i scrolled a little bit here we're uh cave says i've been watching for a bit and i love your moderate takes question would slash do you call quote unquote passing trans people by their preferred pronouns um it depends i mean if somebody was like in front of me it's like these are my pronouns or whatever if i couldn't tell if they're passing then yeah i would call them by the pronouns i think perception is does sort of create reality in a sense like Nobody sees Blair White and goes he him for the most part, unless you know who Blair White is. So yeah, it's just uh, it it it's, it shifts and morphs depending on who's in front of me. Yeah, shifts and morphs. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. I'll be damn says uh, when I have kids and if my kid says they're trans, I'll be like cool. They're not gonna do anything until they're an adult. Yeah, it's reasonable. I would definitely take them to a therapist. Response? Yeah, probably some of that too. Vicky Bell says, I think Shape has multiple pronouns because he's thinking whatever you call me is just fine. Yeah, but then you're also in like a this weird position of like having transitioned and got the stuff done and then gone so far that you can't go back. So then what are you anymore? And like, uh, I that's a mess. I can don't wish that on anybody. Wow. You know, that's really rough. For all the like, it seems like Shape had been through a lot. Mm-hmm. And for all that, I don't he, she, they, I guess that's all of them apply. Yeah. <laughs> um, Shape seems very like pretty well grounded and had having processed things pretty well, mm-hmm. um, and you know at least seem more in touch with reality than a lot of people on there. So yep. that, that was cool. Hundred percent. Um, Dixon Butts says social Funny. media opened our eyes to how many crazy people are out there. Problem is that we're legislating and bowing down to these insane people. We don't do that for any other group of crazies. Imagine if we did that for flat earthers. Yeah, something to ponder. Mm. whose realities do we accept i chani says teens and children suffering suffering from gender should be spoken to by logical unbiased person to deconstruct gender norms based on based insecurity not suggest correction to deconstruct gender norm based insecurity not suggest correction yep i 100 percent agree with you There's a lot of biased people giving gender care Mm. I'll be damn again says at Amala what was your awakening like when did you start to go more centrist right wing at everyone else hi same question if y'all have time <laughs> I got a whole video on it on this channel that you should check out from uh, like left wing activist to conservative or something like that that you can see I also have a stories of us video with Prager you that you can check out it's a long story the Daily, sh- Daily Wire sh- has a video of you on there. There's a bunch. There. So yeah. I would check out another YouTube video where I go more in length at it because we... Our first ever Sunday. episode of Unapologetic was about a year ago. Um, mm-hmm. It's been, I think, still less than a year. I think we launched like mid-April last year. Yeah. And the first episode was Amla telling her story in depth. It's like an hour. So you can go... And it's pinned as the, the main video on uh, the channel. So if you go on our YouTube channel and uh, select that in the main page, it'll be the, the video there so you can see it. Yep. 
Um, Zachary McConnell just gives a super chat. Thank you very much. Um, Sup, my dude says, I tell women that I identify as a fish tick and I'm, as I'm lanky, crusty, and smelly, but oh so delicious. They typically turn me down. Yeah, I was going to say, what's your success rate on that one? Because I can't imagine that it's high. <laughs> oh, Lord. That was a good one, though. Uh, GG Goji 2002 says, I'm a Christian, and my whole thing with bringing God into these conversations is that everyone on the panel has to first agree that God does exist before we can talk about what he intended for us. I've, I saw that question. I was like, you know, what? Why what, would you ask that? You, the, baked into this is a presumption that these people will accept the premise of God or anything. And yeah. It's just not, it just doesn't make sense yeah, to not, bring. Uh, not a helpful place to start. Yeah. Um, Alfredo Orquiz says, we are affirming someone's gender by transitioning them instead of affirming the gender they were born in. Yup. Diva Dawn says... Oh, responds to GGG Goji in Super Chats. Wow. This is not, well, now hey, this is getting... like a Super Chat within a Super Chat. Yeah. exception here. Uh, <laughs> how are you going to say that you have to believe in God to debate belief in God? It was more like the, it was like, what, God, I believe that God makes people. Yeah, I said. Tend to for me to two, two genders. If, yeah, if you say, if you give the uh, people the idea, oh, well, I, I believe God made two genders. If people don't believe in God, then there's no point in asking that question because the very. It's irrelevant to them. Yeah. The very statement insinuates that there is a God. So it just doesn't make sense for the group of people that they're talking to to even put that statement out there. Right. Mandy Joe says, uh, congrats on a million. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you Mandy. <laughs> Alfredo again. The shelf and the laptop. Here's another five for them. Thank oh. you. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. Onward uh, and upward. Zachary McConnell, another uh, messageless super chat. So thank you. Thank um, you. Ahmed Almagrahi says, I totally love your mentality. I'm a big fan from Libya. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's, oh, that's awesome. That's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Hi. Hi. from. You know, cool stat. I think like it's around only like 55 or 60 percent of our audience is U.S. based on YouTube. Wow. Yeah. That's so, like, insanity. Yeah. So like 40 percent of y'all are outside the U.S., which is awesome. I'm trying to guess like what would the top countries be? Probably Canada, like Australia, Australia Canada, UK, UK mm -hmm. Germany. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. Guys, all my international babes. Welcome. Do a world tour. I know. We need to start covering international news at that <laughs> yes, point. What yeah. the heck? <laughs> Give us your uh, foreign policy insights. Yeah. Um, Gabral says, let atheists be atheists. We came to this conclusion through our own religious journey and telling us we need Jesus accomplishes nothing. I mean. Okay. It's all good. I'm mm. fine. Whichever way. Nothing bothers me. <laughs> El Finito says, thanks for being a voice for young conservatives. Thank you. Thank you. Kristen X so. just gives a pretty generous super chat, but no message. So thank you very oh, much, Kristen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Alfredo again. Throwback to when Amelie and Taylor couldn't leave because they were spammed with super chats. Let's not let them leave. For oh, my gosh. That's subscribers. how it's going to be today. We're going to be stuck. <laughs> Stuck here. Know, we're gonna we're, have to have a cutoff point at some at some point. I guys. think we're nearing the end here. We're almost okay. two hours into this thing. Wow. We are. Uh, Kristen, next again. Tomorrow is my birthday. Thank you, Amala, for speaking straight facts twenty four seven. Thank you and happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, Zachary McConnell says, if gender equals imaginary social construct, how can you have bo inborn biological dysphoria saying you're in the wrong gender? It's a so the, the crux of the arguments are so just all over the place. How are you transgender if everything is socially constructed and there's no binary? What are you transitioning to if there's no binary? Uh. <sighs> <laughs> he also says, quote, no pants for girls equals sexist, but boy wearing dress equals girl. What about temperament? Valid We're questions, my friend. Just imagine how tired we are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Leslie McDaniel with a fairly generous super chat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I came to your speech at UVU slash BYU and I enjoyed it. I was one of the older attendees, but uh, I wish I could have seen more of my own age group there. Why do you think my age group is not aware of great truth tellers like you? What was the name? Uh, Leslie McDaniel. I was trying to think if Leslie. we, if we met after. No, I don't, not that I can recall if we did meet and I don't recall. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but, you know, it depends. It, different speeches that I do have totally different demographics. It just really depends on, you know, the temperature, honestly. It's so it's so different all the time. Some some speeches are just all uh, older uh, adults with kids and stuff. Others are uh, college students. But this one was specifically marketed to the universities at, at BYU and UVU. So that's why a bunch of 
bunch of teeny boppers showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. The youths need help. Yes, but we love do. viewers from all ages. We don't discriminate up here. We don't. <laughs> Arguably, afl cn says, Hey, Amala, thanks for everything you do. I was formerly on the left here in Australia. Australia. You and Brett Cooper helped me uh, bring out... <laughs> Help bring me out of this nonsense. <laughs> I love that. My boyfriend is from Australia, so we always love to hear from our Australian followers and watchers. And I'm so glad that it led to an awakening of sorts for you. And we, we welcome you here on the channel. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Karina Martinez says, Amala, how them arm workouts going? Y'all, you can't see through I this, mean, but yeah, they're going you good. You have to ask if you have to ask. And, oh, guys, I'm jacked. offended. <laughs> 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 We're moving up in the world. We have you have been getting a lot of comments of people saying like, "Wow, I'm like, you're looking you're in jack and stuff." So <laughs> good, it's working. Noodle arms no more. I'm what trying. Did you say up to fettuccine or something now. What do we say from from angel hair to spaghetti? <laughs> I'll let you know when we're to, from spaghetti to fettuccine. Yeah. We're not there yet. <laughs> Uh, Vani Tunes says, honestly, I wish I could come on the show. As someone whose belief is a mix of both sides, it makes me feel less crazy, especially since I've had multiple people tell me that I'm not actually black. Uh, haven't we all heard that? <sighs> Just throw that out of there. Maybe we'll do like a, what if we did a huge Zoom call show? <laughs> I, that would not work. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can imagine. That would, it would turn off in, after like two seconds. You no, know, we did we did the mugs for March for uh, the, which we'll be sending those out soon. Yeah, we way, have to pick our winners. list of winners. Yeah. We haven't picked them yet. But so maybe maybe we can do like a on the show little guest appearance for uh, April's prize. Yeah, for, for something like that. You know, if you guys like follow like Good Mythical Morning and Rhett and Link on YouTube or whatever, how they have uh, people make videos that are like, they intro their video for the show or they outro their video for the show. Maybe we can raffle those off on email. Get That'd some be more cool. participation. We try to be interactive here. I love that. Yeah. Um, El, El Infinito, again, says, don't sleep on that mattress firm theory. <laughs> don't, don't sleep on it. <laughs> uh, love it. Dharma Initiative, again, didn't mean to insinuate conspiracy theory. I would just love to see you interview Jennifer Billick, see Rumble Show. I will check her out. And I I think that's Ooh. the last one, unless another one has come in. Is it? Oh, wow. We got a couple more. No, we more. got more. You got Mike more. Mike says, please come to Australia, Amala. Love your work. I'm going there next year, February. Ooh. I haven't bought my ticket yet or anything, and it's not for work, but I'm going to be there <laughs> in Sydney. <laughs> have to do some kind of appearance. There you go. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do an Australian meetup. That'd be crazy. Wow. Should we do that, guys? If you're in Australia, let me know. Hmm. <laughs> Eric Carroll says, Amla, you look nearly identical to a model that I used to know back in the 90s. Tell your boyfriend that I said he's the most fortunate young man. We appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the model's name? I want to look her up and see if I actually look like her. Yeah. Uh, Diva Don says, muzzle control on them guns, Amala. At first I was like, I don't own a gun. And then... <laughs> That's where my brain goes. Oh, oh, they made the connection, you know. Oh, someone said, join the new Omelette Bonobi subreddit. I guess there's a subreddit now. Oh, there is? Yeah. Uh, people oh, discussing the up. show. So go hit that oh, that's up. That's fun. We should react to that at some point. Yeah. That'd be fun. Okay. Awesome. You guys are cool. All right. Is that all we have? I think that's it. Uh, oh, we have one more. Lucy, love watching you guys. Love from Brazil. Brazil. We have a lot of people who watch from Brazil, too. Muito obrigado por assistir este show. É muito legal que vocês estão aí. Muito obrigado. <laughs> you sound like one of those UFC fighters. I forget what his name is. You sound <laughs> literally just like him. But, Anderson uh, Silva. That is who you sound like. No, I don't know. I just named the first Brazilian one that popped up. Maybe it mind. is who. I think that is who you sound. Who you, at least, obviously, Jacare I don't. Silva. I just think anybody who's speaking Portuguese probably sounds <laughs> <laughs> like <Yeah>. that. <laughs> um, but, guys, that's it. It's two hour stream today. We really hunker down for you guys. Uh, mm. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for one million subs. I uh, wish I could send you a piece of cake through the camera. Um, but unfortunately, I can't. Appreciate all of your support, your super chats. Thank you for commenting, hanging out with us on Monday, Wednesday, Friday when we do these lives, watching all the other videos we post. Tomorrow, we're posting a video about friends not being able, you know, the TV show, not being able to be made in today's time, much like The Office. Uh, we still got South Park going for us, though, and going strong. I think they just did an Andrew Tate episode, which I need to go and watch immediately. Oh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to check that out and see if that's actually real. I saw a clip of it on Twitter. So we still have South Park going for us. Uh, mm. But in the vein of offensive shows, we are wearing 
thin. Anyways, that's tomorrow's video. Guys, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we're live. That's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Leave a comment down below about how you feel about this Jubilee video that we watched and uh, give your general thoughts. As always, we encourage healthy debate in the comments. Go back and forth, make some friends. And if you'd like to make friends on the internet, go to our Discord. And that's in the link in the description down below. Sign up. A bunch of free thinking people from all over the political spectrum having conversations about their pets, their food, their ideology, global warming, tacos. I don't know. There are a lot of different cheese. conversations. <laughs> cheese. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite cheese? Bagels. White American, baby. <laughs> Wasn't like a turtle army or something like that going on? I don't know. A toaster. Toaster. A toaster army. army. So yeah. that, that's happening on Discord. You know, it's there's more serious me. stuff too, guys. I there's promise. more serious stuff too. <laughs> it's not all language. <laughs> Real so, quick, yeah. Rutherford B. Hayes is well back from the grave apparently and okay. commenting on our super chat. So thank you, Mr. President. I congrats <laughs> on one million subscribers. We'll spare y'all when I take over the world. Okay, I appreciate that. I do appreciate wow. that. I'm glad we're in your good graces. Guys, uh, <laughs> we'll announce the email winners maybe sometime this week. Yeah, probably this week. Yeah, maybe Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll announce them and then we'll get those mugs and everything sent over to you guys as soon as possible. You can sign up for my email list by going to the link in the description down below. Sign up. It's a little newsletter that you get from me every Friday. Press uh, updates from PragerU and updates about the content that we put out all week long. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We'll see you tomorrow with that episode about Brent.